Hello and welcome to the next CHC expert interview. My name is Stefan Poschik from CHC Corporate Health Consulting. And the next minute, I'm going to join an interview with Martina Hofer Moreno. And I'm really, really interested what she is going to say about diversity and inclusion. So welcome, Martina. Please introduce yourself. <laughs> Thanks for having me, uh, Stefan. Hello to everybody. Uh, my name is Martina Hofer Moreno. And as my name tells, I'm um, yeah, somebody who has Spanish and Austrian roots. And I grew up in a trilingual family. We have much more languages floating around due to marriages and whatever. Hence, our um, family language was always English. Um, I pretty on pretty much earlier on in my career was exposed to diversity and inclusion, inclusion issues uh, due to a new company I had the pleasure to join and also through um, and due to international assignments. So this has always been a key and, and a factor or something part of my life, both personally and professionally, um, that has really uh, shaped me one way or the other. Um, and another thing I'm, I'm pretty excited about is the combination of HR and digitalization and lean processes. This is really something at the core of my business I've been running for the last eight years. Uh, and last but not least, I'm a former competitive athlete where I always was exposed to diversity and inclusion um, during competitions and otherwise. That's really awesome. So you are involved and you, you are in contact with this very intense. So let me ask the first question. What is your personal definition of diversity and inclusion? Uh, my definition is maybe one that might surprise you. Um, I say everybody's abilities matter. We're all equals. And therefore we should focus on the uniqueness of everybody and join forces together. That's really cool. So um, you would say for both areas, so diversity and inclusion. Yes. Okay, that's really cool. Um, and so when you think about corporation, uh, corporations or big um, corporate groups, um, in, in your opinion, who is responsible for this topic or who should uh, be in charge for these topics in companies? Well, I'll break it up. Um, in two parts. Uh, personally, I believe that everybody is responsible for it because one is a uh, thing is to just, you know, be for it when it's, you know, en vogue, when it sounds good. And the other thing is, you know, how about your mindset? How about if somebody were to join your team with, let's say, special abilities? How do we deal with that? And um, to the second uh, part of your question, of course, it needs somebody who uh, you know, has sort of the oversight and accompanies this inclusion and, and making the most of the diversity and inclusions. And that's probably somebody, depending on the company size, either the CEO, him or herself, and or HR. Mm -hmm. But it, I think, is, 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 is more shaped and more dependent on every individual's contribution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you see? Do you see that this is all already um, implemented in companies? Like you just, uh, like you just said, that really the CEO um, or HR is in charge for this. Well, I mean, depending on the company size, of course, with let's say global and international players, I do know several. Uh, HR um, top people who, who not only in the job title, but also in the way of conducting themselves and, and running their HR side of the business, they are responsible for diversity and inclusion. Uh, on the other side, there's always room for improvement. And again, it, this sounds catchy and everybody knows it, but it is something, you know, if it's not lift and um, set by good examples, at the top of the hierarchy, or even if we have a flat hierarchy, it takes the sea level, it takes the founders of the companies, the, you know, the leadership, whatever you want to call them, um, to really put this into practice, encourage people so that they really, you know, they, that they let their guards down and that they're open to it. Because if they sense it one way or the other, maybe even not outspoken, think of unconscious bias, and then of course, this also signals something. So that's why I really think it's a joint effort it needs everybody's commitment. And that probably explains um, my answers to your first question a bit. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So this is immediately brings me to my next question, actually. So when a company wants to start to implement diversity and inclusion, hopefully both topics, yeah, um, where should they start? How can they start? I think it is important to have an understanding of everybody's ability within the company, because some things you might just not know. 
Or for example, um, I think we, we, we spoke about this on another occasion. Um, it was a couple of years ago, somebody was recruiting uh, for a certain position which required rare language skills. And they, you know, obviously the, the market, uh, the recruitment market was dried up on that. There were very few people who for real had the level uh, required. And it took them like two months to figure out that they had somebody working for them with those language skills, but they weren't really aware of that. And to add to the confusion, this person worked in a completely different field, but knew the company. So in the end, they asked this person, um, I think it was a guy, whether he would be willing to uh, you know, have this internal career shift and help the company out in this way. Um, the, the other thing is then to also be open, you know, which ability would add to our competitive advantage? Um, I don't want to come up with a stereotypical example, but I think everybody has either heard of a similar story or um, it's been part of encouraging somebody. If we know that somebody is specifically gifted or has a, a special ability or more than we have it, for example, more than I have it, then I would encourage to put exactly that, you know, on my mind and on my agenda and even, you know, on the job ads, of course, in line with uh, legal requirements, you know, so that we can um, actively address our, you know, recruitment needs or, you know, opportunities to grow, whatever you want to call them, to those people. And um, a personal example, that's why I also said this has always, you know, guided me through my entire life. I have two one was a childhood friend of mine who, if you would see him without knowing his, you know, special ability that came with his impairment, you would never have thought that he would have been able to do a PhD, but most importantly, to do the job that he is doing now for, I don't know, 15 years, extremely successfully, he's one of the best experts in his field. And that is something because his family always encouraged him, and it also took courage to be, to hire him. And, um, for those people who recognize this ability, I mean, they were always on the cutting edge with, with this guy on the team. And the same goes um, for, you know, female, third gender, gender people, whoever. Um, and the other thing is, uh, since you said, you know, of course, this has been, been around uh, and on people's agendas for many, many years. But about 15 years ago, I, I worked on a project co-founded by the ESF called Equal um Gleiche Chancen im Betrieb, equal opportunities at work. Um, and even then, they, they already, um, you know, researched and interviewed people, came up with best practices of existing companies. And that project had been extended for a second round. And uh, I thought it was a real eye opener. But the reality is, a lot of people said, yeah, good idea, but there's still lots of um, things to be done. And therefore, I'm, I'm really grateful for every person, whether it's an HR expert or somebody else who picks up the slack and tries to make abilities visible and possible. That's cool, um, definitely. Um, so we talked a lot about uh, big companies. Uh, what about small business owners, for example, when you just have a couple of employees, uh, just five or 10, 20, maybe 30 or something like that, um, how should they at, uh, approach uh, this, this, these topics or how should, should they start with this topic? I think also open-minded um, the way I described it, mm -hmm. because if you, if you're open, I mean, if it's like with any other vacancy, for example, you're hiring, um, you have to have a clear picture of what this person should contribute to the job, what abilities uh, are helpful. And if this person feels welcome, it doesn't matter whether you have five employees or 5,000. Uh, and usually, I mean, like with everybody else, um, usually most of the people want to do a good job. And that I think is um, um, a prejudice or a fear that people think, well, you know, what do I do if this person calls in sick or communicates in a different way? Well, you know, um, I mean, I see you're taking notes, but, you know, you might be doing your shopping list or, you know, I can't really tell whether you're taking notes about the stuff I'm telling you or, you know, I don't know, drawing a mind map or whatever. I'm actually taking whatever. notes about yeah, what you're telling me. <laughs> see? And that's the, the thing. So this is like, you know, why on earth would we assume that somebody with another ability than mine uh, would not try to do um, a good job. And that's, I think, what matters uh, more than the company size. And maybe it's even um, an asset for the smaller companies if they can then come up with their own success story and say, look, we hired this person and thanks to this person's you know, special ability, whatever that might be, you know, obviously in the, in, in, in the context of, of legal requirements and, and such, but then people should, should be judged and evaluated on their 
their results or their successes less on what they can or cannot do. Mm -hmm. uh, and if this person is successful because you placed on him or her um, or matched it with a with a right job, then that's all you need. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Um, so one, one more question before we started the interview, we, interview, we talked a little bit about different age groups in companies and you, uh, you, you said something about uh, what was for me really, really interesting. So I want to add this to our interview actually. Um, so you talked about diversity and different age groups in company, in companies. Can you tell a little bit more about this? Yeah, I think um, this, you know, age group mix is, is really important uh, for, for you know, any area of our lives, whether it's the society, the neighborhood, the, um, the job related environment. Because I mean, as far as I can tell, this is um, more or less the, the first time I think three generations are working together. I mean, depending on your, but let's say a teenager who is an apprentice might be working with people who are his or her grandparents age. Uh, and then there's the X's and the Y's in between. Um, so that's, I think, new to all of us, thanks to, you know, technological advances, better healthcare, you name it. And uh, I really believe, and that's why I'm also supporting initiatives, um, encouraging that, that, that it's important to join generations um, because we can put all of our knowledge together, um, number one, and number two, even though if we belong, you know, if you go by our birth date to a certain generation, this does not mean that we're all, uh, you know, aiming for the same, that we all want the same. Um, because, you know, you, you might want um, to work part time as a young parent, but you might also want to work part time because you just are, uh, you know, taking care of, I don't know, your, your, your elderly um, parents in law, for example. And, and that's how you can also put, um, you know, new work models in place. And also in terms of innovations, I think it's really important to draw on the knowledge that the different generations bring together equally um, as you would, you know, put uh, different experts on a team. If you have to, um, you know, work on a client project, you might need somebody who has the financial oversight, who has the R&D ideas, um, who markets the product and so on and why not do that with the generations why not have them you know live and learn together also at work and I think that is something I mean number one we always were at one point of our lives the youngest doing something and eventually we will be the the not so young anymore let's put it this way so and 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 that is something where I always roll eyes at people's well you know this is this going to be difficult but think of sports I mean every you know even younger kids they're put into age groups uh, when you run, that's also, oh, you know, oh, you turned this age. Welcome to the new age group. And then uh, because I also was uh, running um, as a competitive athlete and people were telling me, oh, you know, happy birthday, but uh, all the best because now you're the youngest in the new age group. I don't know whether you will be able to succeed. And then I turned a bit older and still was in this formerly new age group and said, well, you know, happy birthday, but mm, I don't know how you will do uh, on the next races because, you know, there's this other person, he just or she just entered your, your, your age group. So, and this has nothing to say about our abilities because sometimes I won, sometimes I lost, but in the end, can you really judge somebody based on um, their age or what they can do exceptionally no. well? Definitely not. <laughs> Okay, so I see uh, this is so an interesting topic and I'm really, really looking forward to go much more in detail uh, and in depth into these topics at the HR Future Night. So thank you so much, Martina, that you uh, took the time and I really, really appreciate uh, uh, the, the conversation with you. So um, everybody who wants to know more about Martina, where can they find you? Where can they connect with you? Um, thank you, Stefan, for having me. I really look forward to the HR future night in November. Um, whoever feels like connecting, feel free to uh, drop me a connection uh, request on LinkedIn under my full name, Martina Hofer Moreno. Uh, if you want to find out more about my work, feel free to visit my um, website, www.erfolgsspur.at. That's great. We will tag you um, in the post and also link the website. So um, everybody, um... Just joined HR uh, Future Night. It's a free event. You don't have to pay. Uh, we just collect donations um, for a charity. So we're really looking forward to see you at HR Future Night and to talk more about this topic. Martina, thanks again. Thank you so much and have a great day. See you there. Bye. See you, Stefan. Thanks. Mm -hmm.